Okay, so Pi News episode 90, and we have a new Raspberry Pi, and this time it's not one of the standard Raspberry Pis like the 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, or the Pi Zeros. This is a Pi Pico, which is definitely more the maker side. You can see how tiny it is, even next to a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. It's not really my side of Raspberry Pi. I tend to concentrate more on operating systems and getting things up and running rather than the maker side, but I am always intrigued by it and I have ordered one, so it should be coming pretty soon. I do have a video on the original Pico because I got sent a starter kit from 52Pi and I've really enjoyed playing around with it and uh, sort of getting all the little lights and speakers and various different things like that to work. So if you want to know a bit about the Pico, there's definitely some projects you can do in there but there are some much better videos on the Pico. So Jeff Geerling's done a deep dive into it. And also the Pi Moroni video uh, is pretty decent, which is this one. And uh, I'll just show a few screenshots from it rather than play any of it. So the price is only $5 or five pound in the UK. I think I paid 2.99 shipping, two times faster than the previous Pico. So here's a picture of it next to the original Pico. So very similar looking. But from this video, it was some of the uh, different accessories that you can get from it that I thought was interesting. This Pico jumbo board. So the Pico actually fits on this and then you can attach all the accessories to these huge holes on it. And it's really good for learning because obviously it, it just makes it much more usable. You don't have to solder anything. You're just sort of joining things on. And uh, yeah, it makes it a lot more understandable for people learning that side of it. And there's also a very cool one here, uh, the Explorer. So you can see the Pico can fit on, but it's also got a speaker and a screen, GPIO pins and so on. But as I say, not really my kind of thing for Raspberry Pi, but I think it's fascinating. And some people will come up with some amazing projects on it. And all the information is also on the official Raspberry Pi site. So I'll link that in the description. Now what I started doing on Pi News, but I forgot on the last one, is just sort of going through some of the things since the last Pi News. So there's this one, and I didn't do it since this Pi News, so 88. So I had some cameras sent to me from RGCam, the Pi Vice Station, all pre-set up cameras, really nice quality cameras for Raspberry Pi. Windows 11 with Prism, which was a compatibility layer, which definitely had better performance on the Raspberry Pi 5 and the Orange Pi 5 as well. I had the huge Ice Tower Plus cooler, which I was really impressed with. Had the five volt, eight amp power supply if you, if you need more power on your Raspberry Pi. Got a touchscreen keyboard which can be used with Raspberry Pi Connect. I tested 10 touchscreens for Raspberry Pi, oh, and I showed the Pico in that video as well, and said what my favorite touchscreen OS was. Raspberry Pi OS got a nice update, there's a video on that if you're interested. Had the really nice Pi and Man 5 case and built that up. Three and a half inch screen for Raspberry Pi 4 and 5. The Crowview Note 14, which is a Raspberry Pi laptop, which is super impressive, and I'm gonna do some more videos on that soon. I managed to get my hands on a Brazilian Raspberry Pi, so the blue Raspberry Pi, and I've been playing around with that. I've got another video coming out soon, uh, but I also tested Raspberry Pi OS on it and optimized it. We had a new operating system, Ultramarine Linux, which looks like it's gonna be very impressive in the future. And most recently, this four NVMe board for Raspberry Pi 5, which was really impressive. Okay, let's get on with the news. I mentioned this video in a previous Pi News, uh, but I managed to watch the whole of it and uh, there was a really interesting fix on a Raspberry Pi 4 and you can see this cable that's been soldered in and he did actually manage to get it booting. Uh, so it, if you're looking for a fix for your Raspberry Pi, this may be something just worth looking at. It was a really good video, I really enjoyed it. We had some more water cooling for Raspberry Pi. I've got a video on the 52 Pi, uh, the standard one they set up, but you can see this one is, uh, is something else again really with hard tubing for aesthetic appeal plans to control fan and pump speed via Arduino. And it is definitely a bit overkill for a Raspberry Pi 5, but it's always interesting to see what people come up with. Arch Linux powered Endeavor OS restores ARM support. I've done videos on Endeavor OS before and it was an impressive operating system. Really good on the setup. There was all sorts of configuration and things in it, which was impressive. KDE Plasma 6.1 as the default desktop, which is my favorite desktop environment. From the official Raspberry Pi site, Raspberry Pi AI kit update, data flow compiler now available. Power users quickly ask for more, in particular the ability to retrain these models with their own data sets or even to compile custom models to run on the Halo AI accelerator. Halo has been working hard behind the scenes and we're excited to announce the release of the Halo data flow compiler. 
the DFC will allow our users to extend the ability of the Raspberry Pi AI kit and fine tune its performance for their specific use cases. Hackaday reported a new Raspberry Pi 5 DSi cable. The root cause is that the DSi cable used on many Raspberry Pi 5 has changed relative to earlier boards. This means that if you use the Pi 5 with many existing screens and DSi cables, you'll find that your flat ribbon cable gets an ugly twist in it. This can be particularly problematic when using the cables in tight cases where they may end up folded, crushed or damaged. And you can see the shape and the size of the new cable here. A Pico project, but on the original Pico. Uh, the new Pico Micro Mac adapter takes your Raspberry Pi Pico into a Mac Classic. This is from Adafruit. So the Micro Mac, a Macintosh 128K hardware software emulator for under five pound. Just add keyboard, mouse, monitor, and power, and you've got a tiny little classic Macintosh box ready to use. And you can see the setup here. And uh, from Tom's Hardware, there was an attempt to upgrade the Raspberry Pi 5 with 16 gig of RAM. Even though the CPU supports it, the Raspberry Pi 5 refuses to play nice with extra memory, so it didn't actually boot. One Raspberry Pi board was destroyed in trying this by applying too much heat. After installing the 16 gig, the Raspberry Pi 5 would display the boot screen, and I'll put a link in the description if you want to know more about that story. Check out this Home Assistant. Uh, so this is from Hackstryo. Boris puts two Raspberry Pis to work in this impressively industrial Home Assistant control panel. It just looks great. And there's a video link with this if you want to know more about it. Look at the wiring. I wouldn't know where to start. If you're interested in knowing what you can do with AI on a Raspberry Pi, there was this story from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and they feature Jeff's Raspberry Pi 5 with 55 tops of AI processing, <laughs> which is just crazy. And there's a link to the video in there. Thanks to Richard Gentry for letting me know about this. Parrot 6.1 is now out on Raspberry Pi and also works on Raspberry Pi 5. I demonstrated it on Raspberry Pi 4 before because I couldn't get it to work on Pi 5 but it is now working, he assures me, on a Pi 5. I installed Parrot OS 6.1 on my Pi 5 8 gig and it runs nicely. From Hackstryo again, Waveshare made a tiny Power Over Ethernet hat and it works in the official Raspberry Pi 5 case. So Power Over Ethernet is where you're powering your Pi via an Ethernet cable rather than powering it via the USB-C. Uh, it can be very handy in remote builds, so, you know, if you're putting it into machinery or or mounting a Pi somewhere where you haven't got a mains cable, you can actually power it from the Ethernet cable. We got, uh, again from official Raspberry Pi, a new RP2040 CMSIS pack. So this aims to standardize device support across many different vendors. So for the Pico and the Pico W. This was impressive from Tom's Hardware. One of the first home computers resurrected, Raspberry Pi and 3D printing brings faux TRS-80 to life. Now I don't remember this one, although I do remember some computers looking a bit like it. See we've got the trackpad and the tiny keyboard in here. So it's a 40% scale replica from 1977. 5 inch display, 640 by 480. Yeah, it just looks cool. We had a rather impressive looking Cyberdeck on Facebook here. You can see with dual screens and a motorized screen as well. And you can pop the keyboard away. <laughs> I mean, it all looks really impressive. Someone had asked, does anybody have any information on this build? We had a Raspberry Pi in the wild. Uh, you can see in, where was it, Best Buy, uh, they had a demonstration here with a steering wheel. And you can see it says, welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. So I guess it's just playing a video rather than actually playing a game. Tom's Hardware showed a cool looking Cyberdeck, Cyberdoor 2064, oversized scroll wheel, handle, OLED display, and Raspberry Pi Zero. It uses the Pi Zero and a Pico. A low resolution 128 by 64 pixel OLED display built in keyboard. Does it very nicely finished. You can see here Jeff Gearling hacked the Raspberry Pi firmware for the world record overclock. I won't say anything more about it, but yeah, definitely worth watching. This is an unusual looking laptop from Hackstryo. Portable Pi 84 is a unique DIY laptop you can 3D print today. You can see here with quite a wide display and a proper keyboard. Looks like it folds shut. And always nice to see some of the workings with the batteries and all the cabling and everything in there. This looks handwritten on the keys. Another Pico being used. A lot of people are using these for keyboards. And I saw this story and I, could, I didn't quite understand it uh, thoroughly. So maybe someone can explain in the comments. FWUPD Linux firmware updater adds unofficial support for Raspberry Pi 5. Obviously the Pi has uh, updating capabilities so we're not sure how this gains us but i mean it's obviously there for a reason so it must be something that someone needs but yeah if someone can explain it to me i did read through it but i couldn't quite get 
what it was there for because we can already update it within its own software. But maybe it gives you something that the normal update doesn't. Yeah, there's no comments on there anyway. But I'll leave a link in the description if you want to read about that. We did another cool little Pi Zero in a casing, this time with a BlackBerry keyboard and PlayStation buttons look. Circle, triangle, X and square. Hackberry Pi Zero. Hacker's looking for something to take with them on the go and is powered by one of our favorite SBCs. Got Kali Linux there and Raspberry Pi OS. And I like the Zero 2W, similar power to the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus that I've been playing around with recently. I'm really looking forward to what the next Pi Zero will bring. Imagine if it's the same sort of power as a Raspberry Pi 4. It would be amazing. I hadn't noticed there was two different models. So again, links in the description if you're interested in that. And last up from Pharonix, Raspberry Pi driver update with Vulkan 1.3 support. So this applies to the Raspberry Pi 4 and 5. They now advertise as Vulkan 1.3. So Misa 24.3. I must try some things that didn't have support because the Misa version was too old. I must try and think about what, what things I couldn't get to work and came up with that error. So Vulkan is more about 3D graphics, so we're talking about gaming here. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.